So CNN has been having town halls with all of the Republicans. Nikki Haley had hers and Ron DeSantis and even Vivek Ramaswamy who just uses an opportunity to shout all of the conspiracy theories he knows. They were given these town halls because they're candidates and CNN has an obligation to their viewers to show everyone who's running. So when is your CNN town hall going to take place? <laughs> but so listen, John, the, the, the reason why I mentioned the four states that kept all of us off the ballot, and I mentioned Marianne and Dean in terms of not getting media coverage. Also, Dean got very good media coverage until he didn't. Uh, the minute he started criticizing Biden, Politico and other outlets started writing hatchet jobs on Dean Phillips. Who the hell is this guy? Who does he think he is? Here's John Fetterman to say what a a terrible person he is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right, and now they've written a whole bunch of hatchet articles about him as well. So the reason I mention those things, guys, is because it's not just about me. It's not that they hate Jank Uger or they hate the Young Turks or what what or that I'm a, a naturalized citizen. No, it's systematic. They and they don't even know that they're doing it. They're not evil. They they just they're in a group think and in a bubble. If you told anyone at CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, etc., well, Fox News might not be a surprise. You guys are massively biased. You hate outsiders. You'll never let them speak against people in power. They're like, that's outrageous. We're so objective, right? And then they say, okay, then let Marianne Williamson on. She's polling higher than Nikki Haley, who you love and give incredible praise to every single day, even though you're supposed to be the left leaning channel on MSNBC, right? They're like, no way, no way we let Marianne on. Or do you now Dean's band too? He's saying naughty things about people in power, right? Me, forget about it. Oh, you know, they're like, so this is the state of our party, guys, and this is the state of our country, where it is if you're someone actually trying to help the average American and you're not a standard greasy politician, corporate media is your number one enemy. They are the ones that will block you and make sure that you never see the light of day. And and it's John, you know, I'm thinking of even writing an op-ed about this. It's basically the invisible primary. It's the press decides who you get to see first, so who you your choice are. I think Marianne has dropped a little bit in the last month in polling, partly because people don't know she's running anymore. Because there is the hardest ban I have ever seen mm -hmm. on covering someone on as. As we have on Marianne Williamson, so she hasn't gotten a CNN town hall. Of course, I'm not going to get a CNN town hall. So you know, the the journalists should answer for themselves. What's wrong with you guys? Why do you guys hate outsiders so much? It, look, and it would be one thing if they explained, and we might not agree with their their explanation, but it is it's up to them. It's a primary, so they don't even have to make sort of the case that they normally would where it's the actual election, they have to be fair to all the candidates. But they they literally do not even have to explain their thinking on why, like Chris Christie is the Republican who I guess I would support if I was voting in the Republican side. He is at like 2%, he has had town halls. But Marion Williamson at 13, what's that? I'm at 2%. I'm tied Chris Christie. I know what I'm saying. He has gotten one. Marion Williamson yeah. has more than six times the support. She does not get one. Uh, Dean Phillips is an elected politician. He doesn't get one. Vivek Ramaswamy is on very online, and he gets a town hall. There's there's no rhyme or reason to it other than they are willing to acknowledge the Republican primary because that conceivably could hurt Donald Trump, even when they're bringing on people who are clearly only running to eventually endorse Donald Trump. But they simply will not acknowledge that there is technically kind of in some states a Democratic primary that is still allowed to happen. And it's just crazy to me that they don't have to actually explain that. Nobody is forced to explain it. Yeah, because that's the great you know conundrum that we're in. The progressive populist outsider is a bucket that is so invisible that the press doesn't even allow us to ask them a question. <laughs> like when we ask them rhetorically, hey, how come Marianne's at 12, 13, 16 in some polls? Christie's at two, he gets a town hall and she doesn't. There's no one to ever ask that question because they've banned us all. They've mm -hmm. invisibilized all of us. And, and guys, I'm telling you, I know a lot of them. They have no idea. Their group think is as thick as MAGA's. If MAGA genuinely believes that Donald Trump won the 2020 election, and everyone in mainstream media genuinely believes that they're super fair and really objective 
And they're like the fairest people in America. And if they heard this conversation, their head would explode. They'd be like, it's crazy. No, those candidates are illegitimate, but they don't know why they think they're illegitimate. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing about this phenomenon, John, is that somehow, and I noticed this during the Obama years, even in late Obama primary, I'm like, huh, does the press know something we don't know? Because they're being really good to Obama. And he looks like, yeah, he's a US Senator, but barely got in there kind of like Dean Phillips. He's only been around for two years, actually, Dean Phillips was around six years. And, and but they're being really nice to him, like really, really nice to him. And that's weird, right? And then for John Fetterman, I was like, huh, they're being really nice to him. Like they're not burying John Fetterman, I wonder why. And then they get into office and then you realize, oh, mainstream media knew better than we did, it turns out. They were never going to bring you change, and somehow the group think of group, corporate media already knew that before we knew that, and and so whereas you can tell still to this day, everybody in Washington, including everyone in the media, despises Rashida Tlaib, and that tells you, okay, that they're not on board for what Rashida Tlaib is doing, and so. She's still challenging power and you should support her. One last thing about it, we're doing a town hall today where I'm just gonna ask people, you know, I'm gonna do this, you know, when I fully rejoin TYT from that perspective too. But now as a camp in the middle of the campaign, I'm using town halls to get everybody together. And then let's go ask them a question. Let's go on Twitter, let's ask a journalist a question. Hey, why aren't you covering the these candidates? Let's ask the pollsters, why aren't you including me in polls if I'm beating two governors and tied with Chris Christie? So let's let's because that's the only tool we have. So let's go work together to the next town halls tonight at 5.30 p.m. You can go to jankforamerica.com, you can use that QR code right there. Or you can go to jankforamerica.com and you can sign up for our emails and then we'll send you information about the town hall. But let's go do something about it together. Yeah. It's just crazy to me that like we, you know, TYT held our forum. Of the candidates, it's crazy that they don't have to answer it. And and you, it, I, I know that you have talked previously about you know wanting more high profile Democrats who have been willing to challenge Joe Biden. I can't help but wonder that like at least if a Gavin Newsom or somebody or Pritzker or someone challenged him, is there a is there a line of fame and not, like national profile that would force them to acknowledge it? If Gavin Newsom was running, could CNN deny that? Uh, we'll we'll, no. we'll see. No, 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 no. They, they, CNN wouldn't deny that. They're official, legitimate, uh, corporate sponsored candidates. CNN would be thrilled to have them in the race. That's okay. why I was trying to get them in the race because I know corporate media. I'm not 1% surprised by it, right? So I know that they're going to bury me and Marianne, et cetera. But if Newsom and Pritzker and Whitmer were in the race, they'd love it. They'd cover 24 mm-hmm. 7. And they would think, oh, perfect, you guys can choose between all these corporate candidates because they'll all do exactly what we want. I mean, we're being objective. Um, and, and, uh, and to them, those guys have a better chance of winning than Joe Biden. So they, they probably prefer them. To which, by the way, I, I should also tell you more breaking news. Um, we commissioned a poll and uh, this is the first show I'm talking about it on it. If it's from YouGov, 1200 Democratic and Democratic leading voters. So it's a very legitimate official poll. That's a really good sample size. And YouGov does a lot of presidential polls, a lot of political polls. And so, and you can tell based on how I did because that it's a real poll. I came in at 2% as, as I am in every poll, right? And so it's a totally legit poll. And But when you put me against Biden one on one, Biden's at 83%, I'm at 17%. That shows you not that I'm an incredibly strong candidate, it's that Biden is an incredibly weak candidate. Jank Uger is getting 17 points off of him on a head to head matchup. You know what I would have gotten in a head to head matchup against Barack Obama? Zero, okay? And so he is so weak when you include the other candidates and undecided, etc. He drops down to 64% even though he's the sitting Democratic president. There's no way this guy's gonna win. And then we asked, are you worried about Joe Biden's chance of beating Donald Trump? And 77% said yes, they're worried. And these are not just general voters, these are Democrat and Democrat leading voters. Here, I'll give you the exact specifics here, John. 27% said they're very worried, 25% said somewhat worried, and 25% said slightly worried. Total of 77% saying 
yeah, Biden is going to lose, and that's his own party. And yeah. so, but yet we we go on merrily on board the Titanic, waiting for the iceberg. Everyone knows we're going to hit it, other than a few deluded MSNBC viewers. And no one outside of the three of us, me, Marianne, and Dean, are doing a thing about it. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.